Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us for our Game of Thrones recap show. Winner is taking forever. I am Adam Ganser. And I'm Starlene Hodge. And we are ready to break down what I would say is the best episode of the yeah, season Yeah, so no, far. it was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so at the top of the episode, we had Tyrion and Daenerys having a fairly vague conversation about how much Tyrion it's fucked the up. conversation where, like, your parents come home after you yeah. had, like, a wild party, and you tried to clean up, but there's some evidence of right. it. Why doesn't she bring up, like, hey, man, you brought slavery back. That's, like, my whole thing. He caught mom in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, after they, like, had a honeymoon away. That's, yeah. like, the, that's the situation, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I want to talk about the dragons finally showing up and finally being uh, war machines, like official mm -hmm. war machines. It was a real bummer for that dragon to have not escaped from that pyramid for a year. I don't know what he's eating in there. It's got to be rats. That dragon's got to be rat-fed. Okay, so then after the dragons finally burn a ship, to yeah. Death. Well, right. she needs the rest of the ships. That was actually something where okay. I was like, oh, good idea. Strategy. Don't burn them all. You actually right. need a thousand ships. That's fair. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe yeah. there's some strategic dragoning there. Okay. Yeah. After that happens, we cut to the parlay between Jon Snow and Ramsay. Lady Mormont was there, and she's my favorite. She was there, not she there was, enough. She was just there to give stink eye. Why is anybody following Ramsay when his house sigil is a Ku Klux Klan burning a man alive? Nobody following Ramsay makes any sense. No! So after the parlay, we have the strategy meeting behind the scenes, and the thing I think we learned from that is none of them are good at battle, right? No, they all suck at it. A pincer move. Pincher's not a fucking fancy word. He has that word in his vocabulary. Can you dumb it down for me? I don't know. It's it's a squeezer. No. <laughs> squeezer. I don't, I don't know. It hurt. It's a hurdy a hurdy McTwo sides. No, I don't. No wonder Sans is just there, like. <sighs> Okay. Even then, she didn't even tell John to be like, hey, by the way, we might have the veil coming up. Why doesn't she mention that I to him? I assume she didn't get a response, so she wasn't sure. That is a generous interpretation. Yeah. So this week on Unnecessary Scenes, Davos and Tormund have some kind of a man isn't fighting for somebody else the worst. Kinda. Yeah, should we get drunk? Not so sure. I'm just gonna wander around and be pretty bummed. That's cool. Yeah. See you at the battle. That's about it. I'm gonna go sh myself. Literally nothing <laughs> substantial happened there at all. Can we talk about how the, the Greyjoys have mastered the powers of teleportation? And like they don't show them showing up. So like you think them coming up and just seeing all the fire and right. dragons <laughs> they're and they're just, just like, no, this is a great time. We're gonna go talk to right. them. Right, do you think they got a mixed signal when they saw dragons burning ships and they're like, maybe they don't like ships here. And Tyrion, Basically, his whole purpose in that scene was to break Theon's balls. Just a piece of sh You're a piece of sh You should know you're a piece of sh And he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely a piece of sh I'm like, oh, good. By the way, Yara, like, attempted to flirt with Daenerys. It and worked. And it kind of worked. It yeah. totally worked. It she kind of like, worked. Hey, you know who has shitty daddy issues? Me. I know you do, too. Right. Wink. Okay, so let's talk about the battle. The battle, which I am tentatively dubbing the Rickoning. Yeah. Oh. I know, you're sad for Regan. I did not give a shit about Regan. I, like, Rickon. mentally block that out. The kid is an extra. The best case scenario was an arrow through the chest. I'm not saying it because I enjoyed it. I'm saying, like, this is good for the show. And then happened. for good measure, they were just like, by the way, let's just show extra arrows just going into him. Did you see how far away he was when he was looking and seeing all these events that were taking place? They were, like, 150 yards away. That looked like the Grand Canyon chasm and, like, me having feelings about a f***ing sagebrush on the other side of the Grand Canyon. Not happening because it's, it's too far. I can't see it. I feel like going forward, you can't make Jon Snow a commander of a battle and feel good about it. That was a f***ing... Fucked up decision, man. He sees Rickon in this fucking game that's being played by Ramsay. Forgets the warning he got the night before. He's like, nope, I'm gonna single-handedly charge and save Rickon well, and he, maybe just charge everybody. Do you I'm think okay there with. was somebody in the crowd just, his job was to pile the bodies into one There section. had to be. It <laughs> did feel like people were intentionally crawling over that pile of bodies. That pile of bodies was impossible. I was like, where, I was like, where did... Who did that? I wanted to mention uh, and appreciate some of the work the director did on this episode. Mm. There was a lot of... Uh, very clear film homages going on in that battle. So obviously there's the Braveheart stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, which I don't think is intentional. I just think it's really difficult to do this without looking like Braveheart. But then they had a one -er like The Revenant, where yeah. they're following Jon Snow around, and like there's horses coming left and right, mm -hmm. and he's stabbing a fool off the horse and all that stuff. And then there was Cold Mountain. Have you seen that movie? Mm -mm. They had a lot of Civil War scenes where they had what I could best describe as like a Dante's Inferno type body pile oh. that people were fighting around. I super liked that the director did the due diligence of researching 
Rome versus Carthage, because that was clearly what mm -hmm. the last section with the phalanx was, was a reference to. Mm -hmm. I've seen some images of people online showing John coming out of the pile of bodies, yeah. and then people are comparing that to the scene, like, several scenes ago with Danny being surrounded by yes. all the people calling her mother. That's a cool little, like, right. song of fire, nice reference. It was cool, know? yeah. Can we talk about the giant? Yeah, I need to talk on. about the giant. <laughs> I'm glad that you knew his name. I did not know his name. They basically treated him like a T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Speaking of someone who should have had any type of shield or a weapon. They didn't give him a weapon! He's out there whipping him around with his hands and roaring at him like a T-Rex. I mean, he might have just not wanted it. Sansa just disappears for the battle and then shows up with the Aaron army. Has nobody in Game of Thrones world invented scouts? Can you imagine how easy it is to launch a surprise attack in Westeros? I could get like seven dudes together and conquer a city because they're literally not looking the direction I'm coming from. So let's talk about the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Were you satisfied with it? Oh yeah, completely. <laughs> But I do want like a DVD extras of like every other way he could have died. <laughs> when that dog got up and licked his face, I just wanted to kiss that pooch in the face. But then at the same time, I was like, eat his face. And then he ate his face. I was like, oh, I actually didn't realize how gruesome that would actually yeah, look. Yeah, it's gruesome. I feel like a more satisfying result is like Ramsey's like, these hounds are loyal to me. And she's like, you starved them for seven days. And he's like, no, but they're still loyal. And then she's like, really? And then in strolls Ghost. And that then Sansa cool. has the line, and Sansa has the line, they serve a greater master now. And then turns, right, smoke. <laughs> Maybe fires a fucking fire arrow, like lights some, like the sigil on fire. Uh, that would've been much better. Okay, so let's do uh, predictions for the final episode of the season. I predict that Sansa and Jon are just gonna chill at Winterfell now. Like, what else do they have to do? They do have the problem of, hey, Sis, why didn't you mention Littlefinger? Ah, I was a little embarrassed. Why, because he's, he's kind of skeevy? We could still kick him out now. I don't like, think they can. I think Littlefinger's got a pretty significant army there. Yeah. I'm becoming more and more convinced that Lady Stoneheart is a real thing and that she's gonna show up at the end of this episode. I wish. We're gonna resolve this trial, and if the High Sparrow is not severed in half by Zombie Mountain, then I will not watch Game of Thrones next year. This is like, I'm taking this really? stance. Really? No, I'll probably watch. I was like, what? I know, I'm it was shocked. a lot of bravado. You didn't have to call me out, but that's fine. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching whatever video this is. We are Crack.com and we're excited to tell you that starting this Saturday, we're going to be going from five to six videos a week, every week from now until the end of time, uh, because we've just got so much. So stick around every Saturday for more jokes and make em ups from us. We are now on the set of our <laughs> Breakfast Club remake. Uh, we're very inattentive to the source material. I like that six is the most videos we'll ever do. The thoughts yeah, from now yeah. until the end of time is just <laughs> yeah. six. We made it. There could never be any more than six. <laughs> Subscribe. 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 I was being Ali Sheedy just now.